I'm broadly a fan of the internet, at least as a replacement for TV. Certainly, internet is much greater than TV, but it would be a lot better if we didn't have a for-profit print media that acts as a disincentive to engage um, in the media of the internet. This actually got published. Quote, In West Virginia, Bernie is ahead in both of the state's most recent primary polls. Last week, public policy polling released its finding from a survey of 549 likely Democratic voters. In that poll, Sanders came out ahead of Clinton by 8 percentage points, snagging 45% compared to her 37%. Even with the 4% margin of error, Bernie will still easily triumph over Hillary if these numbers prove to be accurate. Really. So, it's an 8-point spread with a 4% margin of error. Therefore, Bernie will easily triumph. You know what I think the reporter here actually thinks? What the thought process here is? It's exactly that. Well, he's winning by 8, and there's a 4-point margin of error. 8 is 4 more than 4, so he's 4 points better than the margin. And, and he wins easily. You know, QED. I didn't um, get into this in, in the write-up, but when they say there's a four-point margin of error, what that means is that there's a high likelihood that each of the results will appear within um, a set that is four points uh, in either direction of the um, center of it, right? So, and and they don't, like, it's not like, <clears throat> it's not like it's a higher likelihood at, four, at right in the center and then it decreases. No, it's a, it's um, a 99% confidence, uh, uh, or there's a 99% probability. That, okay, so, so let's say the polling says that Bernie has 45 and let's say that um, the it, it's done with such a way that, um, in fact, it's probably not 99, it's probably 95, or even 90, okay? That would suggest that there's a 95% chance, or, or maybe even only a 90% chance, that Bernie's um, uh, result in the election, in the primary election, will be between 41 and 49 percent. And likewise, it means that there's a 90 or a 95 percent chance that Clinton's um, results will be in the 41, um, be between 41 and uh, 33. So we see that that actually, that that result is actually within the margin of error. It's just barely, okay? It's right on the right on the tip of it, okay. But however you want to you know spin it to suggest that Bernie will easily triumph, quote unquote, um, is is just wrong, okay. <laughs> um, and here's the thing. That's exactly why Bernie is right. It's a perfect demonstration of why Bernie is right. That person probably went to journalism school, but, you know, only finished math up to grade 10 or something. Probably has no meaningful education in mathematics. But in today's world, you really need statistical literacy, especially, to get by. But the level of literacy we have you know, in, with numeracy or statistics, um, is absolutely deplorable. Okay, like like this is this is a little bit more advanced than you know multiplying a couple of numbers. Most the reality is that most people have difficulty with that. Okay, but even somebody that you know is relatively, um, you know, uh, has a relatively decent numeracy level. Um, is not necessarily going to pick up the knowledge necessary to read a poll like that, right? And it's not just polling. 
its day-to-day -day things require numbers, percentages, you know, and, and understanding what these things mean is key. In a world where we're bombarded with information, we have to learn how to analyze it. And we can't do that in four years of high school. That's Bernie's argument, right? Is the reason that you know public universities and colleges should be funded using a, a model similar to the model that we use to fund high schools is that a four-year degree is basically worthless. Um, it's it's a pre like, you know it's like the basic. It, it's no longer an advantage. It's now a minimum requirement, right? And to force people to pay large amounts for what is a minimum requirement is not... Um, what it's going to do is it's going to push Americans further and further behind um, as all of these other countries provide greater opportunities for their workers, right? Um, it's, a, uh, it's essentially a productivity argument that um, we're not going anywhere saddling people with all of this debt, providing all of these disincentives um, to get to a level that is no longer in any way advantageous, but is merely um, a mere, uh, an absolute basic minimum level, right, to, to even survive. My perspective is that he's right with his argument, but I take it to a different step. Um, you'll notice that I haven't exactly endorsed um, his education plan. Um, I, I do like it better than Hillary's. Um, if like I don't, her education plan is just like this horrible Calvinist thing. It's just like you know, it, it's 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 you know as soon as she gets over the gay marriage thing and as soon as she gets over you know all these other things. You know, then she comes up with her education plan, and it's the same fucking, you know, hard-ass, pull-yourself-up-by-your-own-socks, total Calvinist bullshit logic, right? It's like, you know, like you, you gotta work on the farm in order to, you know, <laughs> you know, like, set, like, exact limits on how much your parents can, it just, like, total, it, all, it's all about proving yourself with hard work, right? And she really believes that, you know? She's not... Like, when she says she's a Methodist, like, look, look into what, what that means, okay? And you will understand what her policies are so much better. I think that that's part of the disconnect, is that people don't even realize, you know, like, what... In a lot of the United States, you know, in the northeastern parts, in the western parts, you know, the sum total that that most people interact with the concept of Calvinism is like like two lines in, in reference to, to to you know to to, to Weber um, and his famous statement, right? <laughs> it's like the sum total of Calvinism that you ever learn about, or more about Marx than you do about Calvin, right? Because it is irrelevant in the world that we live in. Okay, but if you're a Methodist, um, or a couple of other different types of, of denominations, then you take these ideas very seriously. The harder your work proves um, how godly you are, right? So for her, this idea of free stuff is like an affront to her... Um, to the way that God orders the universe, right? It's not like like it's it's not just um, a question of uh, of class conflict with with, with somebody that, with, with a Methodist like Clinton, a Methodist or a Calvinist or um, any of these other related sorts of thinkings. Um, it, it's quite literally um, an affront to their religion, which says that if you want to get ahead, you have to work hard because that's how you prove that you're worthy. Again, I'm not talking about some obscure Republican candidate. I'm talking about the presumptive Democratic Party nominee. But anyways, that doesn't. I I I don't. 
I, I don't really think that... Um, I mean, I, I, I think it's a step forward. I don't really think it's the answer, right? Um, I think the actual way to approach this properly, um, if we're going to have more public schooling, we should just have more public schooling, okay? Um, leave the degree programs for, you know, just pull it back an extra level, right? So instead of assuming that you have introductory calculus when you go to university, they should assume that you have an introductory analysis, right? That you know just a little bit about group theory, right? Or if you're going into programming, instead of, you know, starting with basic logic, you know, they'd, they'd, they'd start with... Uh, I don't know, they start with automata theory, right? And to pull that in, okay? If you do that, you give the, you give people the opportunity um, to learn more about things like statistics, economics. Um, I think that quantum physics should be taught at a high school level, but not in the first four years, the second four years, okay? Um, it, it, there's a lot of stuff about bio, a lot of stuff in bio that that should really be general knowledge, um, you know, evolutionary type stuff, you know, a basic concept of chemistry. Um, we can bring back some more of the classics, uh, some of the humanities. Um, why don't we read Plato in high school anymore? Because we don't have time, but we really should. Um, maybe not Plato exactly, but you get the point. Um, you know, maybe, maybe uh, I'm trying to blank. We'd be better off reading existentialism than we would be reading Platonic philosophy. Anyways. Um, you get the point, right? Um, and this is not, like, something I've just come up with. Um, I've long proposed the idea of of a separate high school that goes after it, right? So you do your two years of, 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 you know, junior high school, middle school, whatever, and then you have your high school from grade 9 to grade 12. And then, uh, you should have, you know, a grade 13 to grade 16. Yeah. Um, where... It's like a pre pre university type thing. Um, of course, not everybody will take those extra four years, but um, those extra four years should be prerequisite to get into universities, right? Um, there's a lot of reasons why this is probably a good idea. Um, lets people grow up a little bit before they go to university. Um, I think that's a big big problem, to be frank with you. Um, it gives people a little bit of extra time to um, consolidate their knowledge before they start paying for it, if they're going to end up paying for it. Right? Um, it gives people more time to figure out what they want. Um, I don't know how you, you know, as, as Mr. Lennon said, you know, in between uh, claims that a working class hero is something to be, you know, is it very hard to determine what the fuck you want to be over your life when you're 17, 18 years old, right? That's not really a reasonable request, right? It, it's still hard when you're 22 or 23, but it's not. It's a little easier, right? It give you give you an opportunity to you know go down a couple different paths as well, right? Try a few different things. Um, I went right out of high school into physics. Um, today, um, I couldn't imagine studying physics, right? Um, and I, I mean, I, I, don't, I, only, I only took two courses in physics. If I had taken physics for four or five years, maybe I'd have a longer, or I'd have a better um, grasp on um, whether I wanted to pursue it or not, right?
maybe uh, if I had had a, a, a broader opportunity to take more courses in philosophy or literature, I would have walked down that path, right? There's lots of different ways to, to go about this, but making university free, I don't think really solves most of the problems. I, I mean, it, it, it's better, right? <laughs> Um, because he is right, but if you really take his argument to its conclusion, what you what we really need is not, you know, giving kids an opportunity to come out with a specialized degree, you know, free of charge. It's we need to give them more space to try to figure out what they want, right? And then at the end of that extra four years, well, maybe that, you know, maybe having a uh, an expanded high school degree won't, won't, won't be worth much, right? But if you go through eight years of high school, and then you go through another four years of, of, of actual university based on top of that, right? After walking into university with a decent grasp of quantum physics, um, with an ability to program, um, with a good understanding, uh, you know, of evolution. After having read a few things, then the university system can do what it's supposed to do, okay? Which is actually mold you into something useful. Making it free doesn't really mold you into anything. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't really solve anything, right? And Hillary's plan that you should, you know, work for a bowl of rice a day, uh, you know, until you get through your schooling, um, it, it isn't exactly. Um, uh, that doesn't solve any problems either, right? <laughs> um, this is this is what you want to actually do. Um, I get the idea that there are some people listening, so hey, uh, you know, chop chop.